hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Oh, my God. If you are here, say hello. Say hello. What's going on, Vivian, Tasha, Brandy, Tiffany, Rhea? Uh, yes, he died today at 4 p.m. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> What's going on, Stephen? Um, Amber, hello, hello, hello. Alicia, what's going on? Stephanie, good evening. Katie, how are you doing today? Everybody, oh my gosh. Today is going to be an interesting episode. Now, let's go ahead and address something right off the bat. All right? Let's just... We got to address the uh, the elephant in the room, which is, is it too soon? All right. Is it too soon? Is it too soon to drag John McCain? Someone earlier was like, oh, my God. Uh, uh, why are you talking about John McCain? His body isn't even cold yet. And I was like, I think she deleted her comment because I was like, nah, I think it's cold. <laughs> But look, all right, we need to, to get some shit straight because first off, this idea that someone's death means that we need to be respectful and not say anything negative about things that they've done, the ideology behind it is that Someone is dead and we don't want to disrespect the family members because, you know, they're going through a tough time and whatever. Which, like, okay, I get that, you know, the family members might feel a certain way or whatever, but we're talking about John McCain. All right? We're, we're talking about John McCain. Like, that's, that's the equivalent of saying, don't say, bad about, uh, don't say anything bad about Donald Trump because his kids are going to feel bad. Like, I don't give a fuck. I really... I really do not give a flying, a, a Superman flying fuck. I don't give a super fuck. <laughs> Listen, all right? This whole John McCain thing, it's really interesting because I'm seeing a lot of people of color who are like, oh, this is so tasteless. This is so bad. Why are you saying this? But check this out. Isn't it a little funny how whenever white people die, there's always this aura of like, oh gosh, don't, don't say anything. You don't want to disrespect the legacy of them. But how often were those, were, were people talking about the, the, the quote respect of dead people whenever people of color die? So, I mean, the, look, I get that it, it, it gives you certain feels to not talk shit about John McCain, but what so 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 what's what what is the time limit so okay so 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 one day is, is is too soon okay one day is too soon what about two days what about a week what about two weeks like what like what is the logic you know and if you're trying to appeal to some emotion to some oh but it's like you're, you you got to be decent man considering the things that he is being criticized for i think the last thing that we need to worry about is us being decent about telling the real story of john mccain all right so let's go ahead and go into it all right so earlier i ruffled a lot of jimmies all right look on look 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 people people have been pissing in their pants and shitting in their pants people have been telling me oh my god i'm gonna i'm gonna abandon this profile i'm gonna leave this page because you're being so mean to john mccain look <sighs> the quote that i posted about john mccain was that he said all right and i quote he said, oh, let me pull up the, the thingy thing. Um, I mean, oh God, where's my damn thing? Okay, yeah. So he said, I hate the gooks. I will hate them as long as I live. All right. Now, 
people were talking about context. Oh, but he was a POW. You know, he was saying that because he hated his captors. What would you do if that was if you were in that situation? And look, I get the logic of John McCain was tortured and he was imprisoned, right? But if we want about if we want to talk about context, then we need to provide the full context. We can't just contextualize something uh, in in this selective manner where we want to just be like, oh, well, let's. Let's reframe his racism so we can understand it. Because it's, it's the equivalent of someone saying, "Oh, well, you know, I called those, I called those, um, those brown people, uh, uh, you know, you you dirty Taliban. Oh, I call them that. But like, look, I'm only saying that about the terrorists. I'm not saying it about other people. Oh, 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 no, you're not, you're not one of the, you're not one of the bad black people. You're not the N word. You're one of the good ones. Don't even worry about it. So." It just doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. And when you're talking about the word gook, it isn't something that John McCain just invented because he was a POW. Gook has a huge history for being not only racist, but based in war. The first time that gook was used was against the Filipinos. Okay? It was against my people. At first, uh, they, they referred to Filipinos as gugus. And interestingly enough, the term gook wasn't used until uh, uh, Americans used it against Haitians, which is sort of a, a fascinating piece of history. So it went from Filipinos to Haitians when it was officially called gook. Then it got transferred over to the Japanese, to the Chinese, to Koreans, and most famously to the Vietnamese. Okay, so it is a historically racist as fuck term. The prevailing motto during the Vietnam War was the best kind of gook is a dead gook. Okay, so... Keep that in mind when you're trying to defend that piece of shit and his piece of shit racist language, okay? Because it isn't something that, you know, oh, well, like he had a hard time. Okay, context, right? So we want to talk about context. First off, let's talk about why he became a prisoner of war. What happened? John McCain was a pilot, and he was on a bombing mission. His objective was to bomb people in Vietnam. And you can't spot bomb to just, oh, I'm going to drop this bomb on the village, but hopefully the bomb only kills the bad people. No, it kills every fucking person. He was on a bombing mission, and his plane was shot down, and then he was captured. I'm not saying that it validates him being tortured or anything like that. But like I said, if you want to talk about context, if you want to talk about context of him calling Asian Vietnamese people gooks, then let's also talk about why he was even in Vietnam in the first place. Boom. Shut the fuck up. Now, John McCain had been very consistent about his use of gook. Very consistent about his use of gook. And of course, people, oh, it's because he was POW, right? He was using it consistently all throughout up until like 2000, right? And it wasn't until he started running against, uh, it wasn't until he was uh, uh, trying to win votes. And it wasn't until he was running against, I think it was like either Bush or Brock. But it was really fucking late in the game. When he finally decided, oh, you know what? I learned my lesson and I shouldn't have said it. But again, if you want to talk about context, he was saying the word gook at a time in America when it was most impactful. He was saying that when we were having, when we were in war and after, and for him to sustain that, means that he was continuing that culture. He was a fucking politician. He was open about the word gook. He said it in the media. 
he it, it wasn't this thing where he was on a tape and he like slipped he's like oh yeah i was at the store and i saw a gook like it's not like that he was called <sighs> there is a quote so he said i will continue to condemn those who unfairly mistreated us and he said this in february 21 uh 21st i think it was like 2000 seven or something like that i forgot um the quote continues but out of respect to a great number of people for whom i hold in very high regard i will no longer use the term that has caused such discomfort i apologize and renounce all language that is bigoted and offensive which is contrary to all that i represent and believe now what the fuck does that sound like does that not sound like every other racist person who has been caught up and exposed Oh, I know that it's bad. I know that it's hurt people and it's caused discomfort. I'm just not going to say it anymore because I don't believe in those beliefs. But you did. And you have for a long fucking time. Now, that's just the racism of John McCain when it comes to Asian people. At least the shit that I know. There is a book that I actually want to pick up. There is a... uh, a writer who, oh gosh, I forgot his name, but he's this Asian American writer from Texas who grew up with white supremacists and he grew up with the KKK harassing his family and shit. So he has a lot of uh, experience being fucked with by white supremacists. And he wrote a book called Gook, talking about John McCain's history of using it and why it's so uh, significant. Uh, so I definitely want to go ahead and buy that and check it out. Uh, if anyone else is interested, definitely go ahead and look into it. But moving on, let's talk about MLK. All right. John McCain was opposed to um, establishing a holiday for Martin Luther King because he thought that it was excessive. He thought that it was it's, it's a waste of taxpayers' money. Um, and people say that, oh, well, he, he recanted that. He, he was totally like, he reversed his, his stance on it. And he said himself, oh, you know, well, people change. And, you know, my, my, my opinion on, on the Martin Luther King Day has, has evolved and whatever. And I'm, I'm better. But as one writer wrote, he might have understood or at least tried to demonstrate that he understood why it was problematic to be opposed to Martin Luther King, but he was still very much opposed to the idea of people of color, in particular black people, gaining the rights that Martin Luther King was advocating. So it's kind of like saying like, okay, yeah, so you want to backtrack on on what you said about MLK Day, but your actions are speaking a lot louder than your words. Quote, but even in 19, but even by 1990, McCain hadn't come to appreciate what King stood for. The Civil Rights Act of 1990 sought to overturn the, the Supreme Court rulings that made it difficult for individuals to prove discrimination. The legislation was fought by big businesses because it imposed new penalties on employers convicted of job discrimination. John fucking McCain voted against the act four times. Now, if you did it, if you missed that, okay, let me, let me paraphrase. The Civil Rights Act of 1990 wanted to overturn a policy that allowed businesses to basically dismiss uh, cases of discrimination, uh, in particular discrimination in the workplace. So that is a policy that was used to protect people of color, to make sure that if something happened to us in the office, that there would be something to break our fall, something, someone to have our back. John McCain voted against that repeal four fucking times. So whether or not you want to say that he changed his stance on Martin Luther King's holiday, he didn't change his stance on whether or not he thought that black people or people of color were deserving of respect in the workplace. 
So sit on that. Now, let's go ahead and talk about John McCain. John McCain and his connection to a, a man named George Wallace Jr. Who's George Wallace Jr.? It sounds kind of familiar, right? George Wallace Jr. was a former governor of Alabama, and you might know him for his belief of, quote, segregation forever. Segregation forever. There is a photo of George Wallace Jr. standing in front of the door of a school in Alabama, the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa. There is a photo of him standing in front of the door of that university to keep black people out. George Wallace Jr. believed in segregation forever. Guess what? He worked with John McCain. And John McCain endorsed him. And when people called out his link with George Wallace, John McCain defended him and said that he's a decent guy, he's okay. George Wallace Jr., he founded a, um, he, he started a, a, a national convention called the Council of Conservative Citizens. And it is a white supremacist and nationalist organization. So John McCain was in the pockets of a white supremacist. So when you talk about this fucking legacy of John McCain, when you talk about all the good shit that he did, look, all right, let's go into it. Are there policies that John McCain uh, loosened up on and he was, quote, more liberal on? Sure. Before, he was very much against uh, the LGBT community. He didn't believe that they deserved to have a right to marriage, and he sort of walked back on his stance on that. But to be honest, a lot of those things are... It's like it's it's hard to to say whether or not it was out of, you know, his his moral compass uh, being recalibrated to be more in line with civil rights, or whether or not it was a decision made for political strategy. Now, of course, a lot of politicians have done that. You know, even Barack Obama has been in a situation like that where he was uh, for for policies before that were discriminatory and he sort of walked back on that. So it's like, I get it. Like a lot of politicians do that shit, right? But again, when you look at the history of John McCain's career, it was freckled with just so much fucking bigotry. There was a, there was a journalist um, who was talking about how he met John McCain and that John McCain was the type of person who would just constantly make jokes about uh, about uh, uh, lesbians, he would make jokes about gay people, he would call them FAGs, he would call people um, gooks and spicks and wetbacks, and he would make jokes about rape. Like, there is an organization uh, for, it's like women's rights, and there's a reason why he has a zero fucking uh, percent approval rating by them. Like, there's so much shit in John McCain's fucking closet. There's so many fucking skeletons in there. But people are so enamored by this, this image of him as a prisoner of war. And they're so stuck on that image that they use that to exclude all the horrible shit that he did. Oh my God, but he was tortured for five and a half years. Bro, I get it. I get it. That's a horrible thing. No one wants to be tortured, let alone torture for five and a half years. I get it. Okay? But to say that being tortured for five and a half years excuses the kind of bullshit that you've been doing for decades? No. No. So it just... It boggles my mind, really. It boggles my mind that people are, are fucking breaking their necks to defend this dude. And to be honest, I think it's, 
it's fake posturing and it's this fake, uh, this, this essentially, um, um, what is it? Uh, perf- performative, what was it like performative morality where it's like, you want to act like you give a shit about this dude's life, right? You want to act like you like care about respecting him and shit like that. Bro, we've been trashing John McCain for fucking years, for fucking years. When John McCain was diagnosed with cancer, people were trashing on him for years. People were saying all this shit. Oh, I hope he dies, blah, blah, blah. And this is coming from all over the place. People who are liberal and a lot of people who are conservative. A lot of conservatives fucking hated him. So if you really cared about John McCain, why were you not there? So it's just like, it just seems so convenient that everyone wants to just jump on this whole like, oh, but like, you know, he, he was a person, he died, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. All right. I get it. You want to celebrate life. You want to acknowledge the fact that, you know, someone's dead, give them their, you can send them off and whatever. But I just, I don't subscribe to that belief. I don't believe that there's some sort of um, uh, limit as far as how soon you can say something about a certain person just because they're dead. If anything, because they're dead, now you should start saying something, you know? And I just, I wish people would stop trying to appear like they care and stop trying to appear like, you know, they, they have this moral compass of like, oh, like I'm, you know, I would never do that. And it's funny because like people will, like people will love my page because I'm petty and blah, blah, blah. Oh, you're so petty. Oh man, you'll, you'll say this, blah, blah, blah. But then I say something that is, I'm not even really trying to be petty. When I made, when I made that post about John McCain, it wasn't necessarily about being a petty. It was just trying to remind everyone, hey, like if you want to talk about someone's legacy and the entirety of sort of their reputation, one, everyone's going to have a different perception of someone's legacy. Some people are going to perceive uh, one person's legacy as, like, like for example, um, take for example uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather, okay? Some people see his legacy as being a horrible person who was a womanizer and who, who abused and beat his wife. Other people will see his legacy as one of the greatest boxers. And I think you can advocate for both. You could say, okay, yeah, he was in his own right as an athlete. He was a good boxer. He was very technical, blah, 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 blah. But they can also say that he was a horrible, shitty fucking person for doing that to his wife and putting his kids through that. And in the same vein, you can say that about John McCain. You can say that, okay, sure, there's certain policy that he did that uh, help people out. But you can also take into consideration all the horrible fucking shit that he said and the horrible fucking things that he did. You know, dude was constantly trying to get himself involved in wars. You know, he when when he was running uh, against Bush, I believe, he he was like going in these rallies and he was joking about going to war with Iran. And he was... He was uh, there's a famous little video of him singing the song bomb, 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 Iran. And he was kind of just joking about it. So tell me, are you really going, is, is, is this the, the, the grassy knoll that you want, that you want to die on? Is this, is this, this, this issue of John McCain being a prisoner of war for five years, you want to talk about that, but you want to, you don't want to talk about all the wars that resulted in hundreds of thousands of people who were killed. And it, to me, it, it just speaks to the fact that you could have numbers, you could have fucking numbers that, that implicate the decisions that John McCain made in terms of uh, war and foreign policy that have ultimately led in the deaths, the deaths, not the torture, not the capture, the deaths, the murder, the genocide of people of color. You want to dismiss that because you feel a certain way of him being pe- about him being a prisoner of war. Look, if that's, if that's your thing, go ahead. Like I said, if you like John McCain, if you fucking, if you think he's the 
coolest fucking person, if you think he'd be like the, the nicest, most fun uncle or whatever, I, I really don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. You know, and it's just, it's hilarious to me that people are, are, are trying so hard to like defend this dude as if they actually gave a fuck. Um, let's go ahead and see do, 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 what people are saying. Mm. Priya said, yep, you can compartmentalize, but no need to get butt hurt over facts. Um, Walker Sands, I totally hear you. I felt the need to acknowledge his decency in some areas, but you can't deny the racist trolling in his policies. And see, even that I feel like is um, minimizing. Obviously, I'm, I know you're not like intentionally doing it, Walker. Uh, so I'm not trying to like call you out or anything like that. But even just saying like racist trolling of his policies, like it, it's, it's, you know... Again, I'm not trying to say anything, but it's like low key problematic to be like, oh, you know, his his racist policy is a form of trolling, as uh, as if it was just sort of a oopsie, as if it was a joke. Again, I'm not saying you know you you believe that or anything like that, but like I said, it's just people are so quick to minimize the horrible shit that he did because he did a few good things, you know. And I think that and I think that like people forget that John McCain as a senator, as a politician, like you, so many people want to look at politicians as if they're like these fucking Mother Teresa's, as if they're these activists and blah, 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 blah. Like at the end of the day, at the end of the day, a politician is a fucking career. It is a job. So if you're analyzing the work that John McCain did, well, the work that he did resulted in people dying. So I just, I don't know. Um, let's see. Steven said, uh, he can now be a prisoner in hell. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Priya said, um, but no, let the body get cold no matter how shitty the person is. <laughs> Steven said, anyone else want some tea? Um, Uh, Nathaniel Rook said, it needs to be said, cancer and death does not magically absolve a person. 100%. What? So, like, you know, if if Trump was was uh, dying, are we just going to be like, oh, man, I feel really bad for him. You know, it's just like that chemo, his hair's falling out. Uh, he's seen better days. Cheer up, champ. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Holly Lease, plus his belief in border control and support of Minutemen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm -mm -mm. Crystal, hello. Thanks for sharing. I always look forward to hearing from you. Oh, thank you, Crystal. Karina said, may he have as much peace as he gave to the world while he was living. Uh, Lakeisha Thomas says, thank you, the love of teenage guy, for standing your ground. Just because you die, it doesn't make you a saint. Nope. Hell no. Um, French Julian, he was a warmonger, sympathized uh, with the POC folks he killed. Um, Akil Smith, humans are flawed. Nobody hasn't said terrible things in their life, not even you. <laughs> <laughs> um, my... Horrible things that I've said have never resulted in influenced public policies on a large scale. My words and my beliefs haven't influenced wars. My beliefs haven't endorsed white supremacists. So I think you need to sit the fuck down, buddy. You need to sit the fuck down, buddy. Michael Watts, he probably has something against East Asians due to his five-year torture experience, although I vehemently oppose the Vietnam War and what America did to those people. Like I said earlier in, in, in the podcast, Michael, if people want to contextualize his racism as, oh, that was a result of him being a prisoner of war, then you need to contextualize the fact that, you know, why the fuck was he there in the first place? What was he doing? Oh, he was on a bombing mission? Oh, I get it. So it's... So, it's all again, I know it sounds kind of fucked up, but it's almost like 
bro, you came in there trying to bomb people, and then you fucking got shot down, and then you got captured. Take the L. Sorry. So, <laughs> sorry. You, your mission was to bomb people. Your mission was to kill people. Hell, John McCain should be lucky that he even got out alive. I'm not trying to say like, oh, like, you know, I'm, I'm against fucking torturing prisoners or anything like that. But like I said, if you want to contextualize it, then contextualize the whole thing. Don't just use it to absolve his racism. <laughs> uh, Mohail says, I'm sorry, man. I'm out of here. My culture and spirituality can't let me follow someone who will not let his spirit rest. I wish you blessings and peace. Cool. No problem. I... Yeah. <laughs> Shit happens. <laughs> um, uh, Marza Stern says, it's like a sealed FBI CIA case 50 years before you can talk about it. <laughs> Dude, uh, again, like I said, please, if someone knows the rules, if someone knows the official rules of when you can say something and when you can criticize someone who's, who passed away, please let me know. Please send me that PDF. Please send me that link to your TED Talk when you, te when you tell me the definitive answer of when I can talk shit about a person who was horrible. Um, now, Khan, it was war. There's constant, uh, there's consent on both parties. Um, mm, Priya said, um, I'm tired of Americans overlooking the death and destruction of brown folks abroad just so they can feel good about not bad-mouthing dead white men. First world problem. Shaking my head. Hell yeah. Kathy Evans. I'm pretty disappointed in him. I just looked him up in his history of saying racist stuff. This includes Islamophobia, like that stupid town hall they keep trotting out where he defends Obama by saying he's not Muslim. Jeez. Uh, let's see. Deborah Lynn said... Uh, people do remember that he voted to hold on to Obamacare without a viable replacement only after he got brain cancer, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, didn't people fucking remember that shit? That this motherfucker was... <sighs> he... <sighs> like, he was so opposed to all these fucking things. He was such a fucking shitbag. But it wasn't until he was about to croak and it wasn't until he was diagnosed that he started to change certain things. Oh, I, I can see the world for how it really is. It's just, it's too late, buddy. You fucked over so many people. And I get that like his, his vote um, was instrumental in terms of making sure that people have health care. But why are people dick riding McCain's vote so much when other people voted too? Like, like his vote has just as much weight. And it's, like I said, it's just, it's frustrating, you know? It's frustrating as, as a person of color where you have to navigate this, this space where you can't fuck up at all. Or else your life is fucking ruined. Like you say some shit out of pocket. You do something that's out of, out of pocket. Your life is fucked. But a man like John McCain can go through his life all the way up until his fucking 80s. And completely destroy a lot of people's lives. But because he has certain views, certain opinions that are slightly more liberal that somehow that makes everything okay? That's some fucking bullshit. All right, let's go ahead and see what people say. Sarah uh, Graham Cracker said, he only changed things because he didn't have anything to lose at that point. He didn't have to worry about the next election. Exactly. Fucking exactly. Can't be a, you can't be a piece of shit for your whole life and then be a, a, a slightly less piece of shit for the last few years or the last year and then and then think that you're going to get into heaven. You know, it's just, it just doesn't fucking work that way. Uh, Lamont Jackson. McCain could have worked harder to have higher numbers 
vote down the repeal. He had a lot of pull in Washington. He basically sat on his hands. Mm -hmm. uh, Seskia Gomes says, when death comes to your door, he tried to repent too late. Karma. Kinshira Ganjura says, his Obamacare vote while he was having brain cancer was typical for his drama queenism of his late career. He loved being the center of attention. That was all that was about. Look, um, I'm, I, I don't want to drag this on too much, but like I said, I said what I said, and I ain't fucking walking back on it. John McCain died. Do I feel sorry that his family members are grieving over it? Huh, I hope they feel better. I hope that the people who are hurting because they've been affected by it, I hope that they know that they don't feel bad anymore. I guess. But do I have some sort of sentiment, sentimental memory about John McCain? Do I feel like I des I he deserves my respect? Do I feel like I need to um fucking uh, uh, uh suck his ideological fucking dick just because he walked back on certain views? Hell no. He said gook, he continued to say gook. He targeted multiple minority groups, women, people of color, Muslims. He, uh, uh, he voted against uh, uh, the Civil Rights Act. And he was just an overall shitty fucking person people try to call him a maverick people try to call him like some fucking um uh straight shooter because he 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 had the quote balls to to vote against his party is that the bar is that is that how low of a bar we have for white men in this country is that is that how fucking low of a bar we have where, where, oh, it, John, John, John McCain, he, 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 he's not as racist as, as the other racists. And, and, and one time he voted uh, in a not racist way. When, one, one time he was not, he was nice to someone. Uh, he, he said hi to me one time. He said, he said, you have a nice, I like your shoes. John John McCain's kind of cool. He 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 he's really nice. Sorry, buddy. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Kathy Evans, thank you for your honesty and pointing this all out. Yeah, he's slightly less terrible, terribly awful than uh, than some. Not a high bar at all. JL Reese says this public response makes sense. Corporatism and patriotism require making heroes of murderous old whites. Uh, Deborah Blevins says, I had a brief time period during one of his earlier presidential campaigns where I started to respect him because he broke with his party and actually voiced some moderate, fair, thoughtful views. Uh, but that was very brief, and he went back to being a, quote, party line Republican and total douche until after his diagnosis. He served party and self until he had one foot in the grave, and then it was too late for his dances to help anyone. Elena Avila says, I need this tonight. The faux sadness and respect for him is depressing. Walker Sands, uh, I don't feel too bad. Friggin' Megan McCain's racist white feminism tried around like cool conservatism, aka casual racism, to infuse into our daily lives and torture people of color. Holly Elise said, we must not let this be a distraction from the current administration either. Oh, trust me, it, ain't a discur it, it, it is in no way a distraction. Trust me, I am watching. I am watching that. Look, my... My butt cheeks are clenched. I am at the edge of my seat waiting for those tapes. I want to know what happens to this presidency. Don't worry. Nothing's going to, nothing is going to be distracting us. Sarah, Graham Cracker, yeah, the bar is so low, we have to dig to find it. <laughs> yeah, six feet under. Um, Lakeisha Thomas uh, asks Keisha Combs, this administration has gone to the dogs. All right, everybody. Um, I think it's about time for me to uh, cut it off short. If you enjoyed this podcast, please let me know. 
like the video or the podcast thingy thingy. And I will speak to you soon. Uh, we'll go ahead and talk tomorrow. All right? All right? I, I, I want you all to have a lovely, lovely sleep, knowing that the world is a better place. <laughs> all right, everybody. Um, take care. All right? All right. Love you.